Hey, you back. Hello and welcome to R&D, a weekly video series where we break down, review, and theorize our favorite media content, as well as keep you updated on new events coming to the channel. I'm your host, Raging Antibody, and today I have... No VBITW89. And uh, we're uh, getting ready to break down a couple of our favorites from this last week. Uh, we're going to kick it off with uh, Gen V. Gen V just finally ended last week. Uh on a pretty climactic uh, season finale, I would say. No, 100%. So, what are your thoughts? Uh, well, my thoughts are, with the whole, like, the angle of having them to blame, it kind of caught me off guard. You mean, like, where they uh, they were the, they thought they were the guardians of the Godolkin, and then in the end, they're the terrorists? Yeah, they end up being the terrorists at the end. It's like, Homelander comes in, and he's like, what are you doing killing our guy? And then, out of nowhere, it just turns to that, and I'm like, I just want to see the end game for it, and then you see Butcher at the end, so it's like, right? Is he into that same facility, or is he something else? I think Butcher, yeah, Butcher is in the the woods, uh, checking it out because I'm pretty sure they closed the school afterwards, oh, yeah. or, or or whatever. Um, I just want to say, fuck Kate, <laughs> <laughs> fuck it, and Sam too. Uh, Sam mostly because he hurt Emma's feelings, but <laughs> Kate because. Kate went full Dark Phoenix. Uh, uh, she is a villain. You know, people might feel like, well, she was justified. No. No. She, <laughs> no. She, and, you know, Homelander also coming in and saying, you know, you know, you would do what kind of animal, you know, are you? What You would turn against your own kind. Didn't Kate do the same thing? Wasn't she, like, manipulating other people to doing shit that she couldn't do? Yeah. Like, 100% because Homelander already knows who Kate is. And he's part of the whole end game plan. So I think he's still trying to keep everything alive and like stable. He's probably still giving Kate shit. Like, like how can you like, like you're fucking up. So let's kind of fix this. I always got to fix your shit kind of thing. I do think that because during the show events, uh, uh, Homelander's on trial, right? Yes. Or, so, but he's clearly still being backed by Vought because otherwise they wouldn't have called his ass in, right? But he's still on trial for for. Blasting that that uh, uh, that dude on the on the camera, right? Um, I think that he's going to use Kate in the boys as a way to manipulate the jury, you know, the outcome of the trial, so to speak. I think that's. I, I think Sam is also going to end up being on the seven. I think he's going to replace Black Noir. Okay, so is that based <laughs> on the fact of the puppets, too? Kind of like how Black Noir. I, with the you know, I kind of made the comparison too, <laughs> but also because, you know, Sam doesn't mind being the the strong, silent type. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he's looking to do whatever. Like, all right. So when during that one during the final uh, episode, he uh, he has an argument, you know, with his inner self. You know, vision, visualizing his brother, right? Where, uh, uh, you know, you don't want to do this. You want to be a real hero. Blah 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 blah. And then he tells Kate, you know, fix me. Turn that shit off, right? Yeah, I feel like nothing. I don't want to feel nothing, right? And stuff, and that that totally fits what Black Noir does. You know, he's just kind of the the dude who gets things done for the seven, right? Yeah. They send him in, kill these people, good. You know what I mean? No emotion, no anything like that, unless he's talking to his cartoon friends, right? But yeah, no, he just goes in and does a job. So yeah, I can see that now in that sense of like, being like a they made movies and stuff of him in universe, but you don't see him social mediaizing you know himself he's not a big instagram guy people know who he is but the uh, the rest of the other others on the seven they're more into the media part black new Year just kind of you know i, I i'm here he kind of and i think there. that fits for sam and they need a replacement for him i mean uh yeah black new Year, translucent and anybody else dead i can't remember <laughs> uh, tra um black new Year, translucent Oh, Queen Maeve. I was going to say, Maeve, yeah, yeah, Maeve's dead. Maeve is, even though we know she's actually alive, but she's dead. dead. So, yeah, they need to replace at least three members. So, Kate would probably be the fill-in for Queen Maeve, right? Or, or whatever, the new female member and stuff. Sam would be per perfect for Black Noir. And, uh, yeah, I don't know who else. I mean, originally I would have voted for, for you know, of course, Marie, uh, Andre, and uh, uh, um, uh, Emma. You know, I think they would have been perfect material for, for, for the seven. What about Jordan? Jordan? I like Jordan. 
Yeah. I think Jordan is awesome. Jordan is still very corporate. Yeah. <laughs> so she was like, she wouldn't be part of the seven. She would probably be more like. She has a good heart and she wants to do the right thing. But she, she is not like the others where they have ambitions to being a hero. Right. Emma talks about how much she wants to be Queen Maze. Right. Uh, uh, Marie is very like, I want to be you know, like Homelander and all my heroes and stuff like that. Even Andre, he wants to be like his dad, Polarity. You know what I mean? Jordan just wants to be accepted. Just wants to be wa- there. Wants, and, but want, you know, and wants to profit from it and stuff like that. So, like, while Jordan isn't a bad person, they are good. And, they, and they, they're really changing or becoming somebody even better through their relationship with Marie. You know, uh, I still think that Jordan would... <laughs> yeah. Somebody I don't see her fitting in the seven. She's either, the like, she's the the person in the chair. Like she can move stuff and then she can change. Like, I, guess I mean, she got some badass powers. I oh, mean, yeah, I, no. I I wonder now. So there's that scene where uh, uh, you know she's ready to, to to throw down with Kate, right? Uh, right after Shetty gets killed, right? Oh, yeah, in the yeah. office and stuff. And then Kate goes, you know, uh, yeah, you stood toe to toe with Luke, but can you stand toe to toe with Sam? And now we know that Sam is stronger than Luke. As far as uh, his powers are concerned, there because they were using his using DNA to make Luke trying to make Luke sc- stronger, right? But now at the end, we have Homelander completely lasering the crap out of Marie, but she survives and she doesn't even look that injured from it. Uh, do you want? I wonder if if Jordan could have stood up against her, or if it's just because Marie's blood powers allows her to heal fast. That's what I'm trying to think. I'm like, how the how did she like survive? Like. And she woke up and she was like, fine. Like, I don't know yeah. how long that there was a time between that and then they wake up in the cell. Like, I, I think I would feel a little bit of something. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, uh, or at least it would be, you know, uh, uh, yeah, she just kind of sits up and she's just like, whoa, where am I? You know, she's not just like, oh, you know, like nothing. Like, she completely healed herself. And I mean, I guess that is... They kind of hint towards it that she does heal fast because, I mean, every time she has to use a power, uh, yeah. she slits her wrist, right? And, yeah. It's got to heal pretty much, like, right after and stuff like that. We never see it, you know, but I'm assuming it's kind of like Wolverine. As soon as the claws go back in, just it, closes it right just up. closes right away and stuff. So maybe that's what happened with the laser. And, I mean, there's other people who have survived, uh, uh, like Stormfront, right? You know, laser my tits, right? I mean, she, <laughs> she essentially survived the laser beam herself, too. So it is, but that depends on whether or not Homelander was holding back or was trying to kill her or was just trying to, you know, like knock her out. Could have been holding back because they might want to, now that the woods is all like blown up and now they're in this whole new cell, they might just want to do other stuff than put them in, well, they were thinking about putting them in the seven. And now they might be like, well, we need a scapegoat for this whole incident. We can't expose the woods. And now they might be just using them because all everybody that was in the woods is now dead. Do you think... Somebody had that discussion with Homelander before he arrived. Because I don't see him being... Sm- well, I mean, he's not dumb, but he's not exactly smart either. No. That he could think of something like that beforehand. No. Like, he, he only, like the only decisions he really, really makes are just anything for himself. Corporate-wise, he's told. He just does what he's told. Like, kind of. Unless if it's, like, not benefiting him at all. You know? But I'm trying to think. I'm like, it's not anyone that was in that meeting... No, because they're all trapped in the helicopter. They're all trapped in the helicopter. They don't have time to be like Homelander, you know, that like, can't go over a planet. But... You think he's still in contact with Stan Edgar? Mm. Well, we haven't heard from... I, you know, yeah. when, when the season first started, uh, you know, they talked about Marie having a, a, a secret benefactor. Now, the two options were that it was either Victoria Newman or Stan Edgar, you know, because that would make sense, right? Then it did turn out to be Victoria yeah. Newman, which, you know, was perfect. But we haven't heard much since he got pushed aside, you know. But we do know he's still out there. He's still scheming, you know. He could be just, like, silently, like, ghost directing Homeland. I wonder if he's he's who told Butcher about the woods. So that Butcher... Because, you know, what better... Who better to team up with is the enemy of your enemy. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so if he's like, well, if I can't be in charge of I'll bring the whole thing down, you know, and Butcher's the perfect way to deliver that, you know. Um, I also want to touch on Maverick, uh, Translucent Sun, right? Yes. So they fight, and then Marie finally realizes she can see him with, with the, by following his blood and stuff like that. And then she knocks his ass out. But unlike 
his father, when he got knocked out in the first season, the boys, you know, he just stayed invisible. He was just out, you know, unless he, you know, physically wanted to be seen, right? But his son, as soon as he gets knocked out cold, he's visible. However, he has a huge scar on the a side. Surgical scar. Or right. Like that, that is not from her, him getting knocked out. So what him? is that? Like, did he have a conjoined twin or or was he also experimenting on what? What do you think is going on there? Well, that should be like something simple, like, oh no, he just had a really bad kidney surgery or something. But, uh, probably. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, no, there's nothing to think about. Just, just, it's just there. Uh, a conjoined twin. Yeah, that's, that's a fuckery. <laughs> uh, that could have been just like based on the experiments. Who knows? He could have been in the woods too at one point and then they yeah. finally released him or something like that. I don't know. I mean, they did have Kate just wiping people's memories, so, and it, I don't yeah. think it was just Sam. You know, because uh, even when she goes down there during the fin- finale and stuff, you know, what's his name, Bob, or what is he called? I forgot. Oh, yeah. Bob. Yeah, yeah, Bob, yeah, he was, the first security Yeah, guy. he's like, he's like, hey, I haven't seen you in a while, but, like, so she's been down there several times, you know, uh, helping out Shetty. And, and we, you know. But, uh, you know, that brings up another thing. So, in The Boys, Homelander states that, you know, Ryan uh, is the first biological son of a suit, Right. Well, how does that make sense if Polarity, or if Andre is Polarity's son and, tra- and, and Maverick is Translucent's son and so forth? Now, the, you know, if if they were born regular humans, right, and then given the, and then, uh, you know, got powers that way, that's fine. But then it, why would they have the exact same powers as their parent? Because there's been siblings like Luke and Sam, for example, right, who have also share the same DNA, but have wildly different yeah, powers. Yeah. So... Is it? I, I my theory is they're not actually offspring; they're clones. So what if Andre their, has like the same kind of scar? Yeah, he has the same powers as his dad. I, I I think that they're clones of their parents. But with Homelander's son, though, he's an actual biological. He's a biological son, so there is no like right clone. That makes makes sense why he has the same powers as Homelander because his literal DNA passed down into you know like and Superman, it's Superman, like, Superman and his son, right? Um. But with the others, you know, if, if if that's never happened before, then the others have to have some other explanation. I don't I really think that they're, they're clones. I really think, because we saw the lab with all the babies and shit in it, right? And they all had similar powers to Homeland, Homelander, because remember, Butcher picks up the baby with the laser eyes and, you know, kills all the guards, right? So I, those are like prototype clones of Homelander almost, right? And in the comics, Black Noir is actually the original Homelander is actually the clone of him or, or one or the other way around but we, they are clones of each other yeah you know so it's not far-fetched to say that in the universe there is a cloning going on they could have used um, DNA from one of the other soups who has the ability to multiply themselves and you know develop that further that is true I'm just like thinking of like a breeding ground of some sort now too well, see, uh, that that leads into the ending where I where I think the other soups are right now. The the the, the four our four heroes. Uh, I think they're in that facility they kept talking about Elmira. Uh, because remember they keep talking about it. it's like this end all prison place that they send all the soups who have no hope, right? And I think you know we never get to see it through the show. I think that's where they ended up being. It's like it's uh... like the Marvel's version of the raft. You know, it's hidden. It's probably under the ocean somewhere. That's, you know, the doors. And uh, like she, she makes a comment like, "There's no doors, right?" It's probably like hidden in the panels of the walls and stuff like that. You know, or maybe they use some sort of technology where it's like, you know, they can walk through the walls. I don't know. But I think that's the super secret facility where they even first compound V in the first place. Huh? Oh, actually, no, that makes. Sense. Probably, yeah, Star by Bot probably had the location of the secret facility, and that's probably it. That actually is very, very plausible. Yeah, I, I mean, I uh, I think, as far as the what's happening next, we know Gen V uh, recently got announced that up oh, their season two is coming, so that's awesome. Um, I, you know, and The Boys is coming pretty soon. I don't think, outside of Kate and Sam, that we'll see the others pop up in uh, the boys, you will probably see Kate and Sam because of what you know what's going on, you know. But I, I think the others they'll save their fates 
forward to the next season yeah, of Gen B. Be, I don't think they're going to be in the boys, but Kate and Sam are definitely going to be showing up in the boys. <clears> probably as like, I don't know, they might refer back to something to do back at the school, and then they might just have to talk to them or deal with them for some reason. So outside of Kate, Sam, and those four, um, nobody else, well, and then uh, Victoria Newman, of course, who, who actually physically has it, nobody else knows about the, the, the super vitals, right? The, 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 the super the killer vitals, right? Now, that brings me back to why is Butcher at the woods? You know, again, I still, I think that it could be, you know, still tested on new equipment. Mm-hmm. Anyways, uh, yeah, I, uh, where was, I? oh, Butcher so in the woods. Butcher, I, I think that either Stan Edgar or Mallory, right, who, who talked to uh, uh, Shetty before, uh, I think one of them sent Butcher on this quest, right? Like, hey, you should go check out, you know, God, you. Uh, they were experimenting on the kids down there and, and stuff, and so that's why Butcher is there. Now, remember, now, Butcher is actually would be personally affected by this virus. He has been taking these, right? Thing. So he, he has superpowers, and we know that those are actually also killing him, uh, which is kind of ironic, you know. Um, but if Butcher got his hands on the virus, knowing that it would also kill him, do you think he'd use it? I think that he would first think about using it or want to use it, and then he'll get talked out of using it, and then there's going to be a struggle of him wanting to, to actually get done with the situation. Like, I gotta use it. He's like, no, we can't. And then it's like, okay, fine. And then he's like, well, you know what? Shit's going to shit right there. Everything's going to shit right now. We gotta use it. And maybe, like, a little bit goes off in, like, some, like, enclosed space. Not so much, like, a big... You know, so, like, airborne. just to take out Homelander, maybe. Like, try to take out Homelander, like, try to, like, encase him or, like, enclose him into, like, a little room or something like that, and just, like, be good. And just... You know, it would be a really big, uh, like, whatever, punch in the face would be, like, say, um, you know, it, Huey is more, is more or less the, the, the voice of reason when it comes to Butcher, right? I mean, he, he reminds him of his little brother and stuff. That's the whole reason he's pretty much brought Huey on the team, right? Now, what if Huey is the one who accidentally releases it and it kills Starlight? Ooh. <laughs> Plot twist. Uh, ooh. I can see Huey accidentally do it. I can actually see Huey purposely doing it. Like, to take out A-Train? And... To try to take out A-Train or try to like do something and just be just like, and just, just do it. I think because I... I Huey knows that Newman has powers, right? He figured that out at the end of the, of the last season, I think, right? And so he could, you, uh, if she, if she follows her comic book path, you know, uh, uh, and goes on to becoming like president or vice president or whatever and stuff like that. I mean, this would be a reason for Huey to take her out, you know. But like I said, you know, it kills anybody with Compound V in their system. Now Huey is also he he doesn't continuously take it I don't think I think he stops at the end of the season but he has taken it I, I don't know if that would kill him too I don't know if it would kill either like it probably would kill Butcher because he's taken so much of it for Yui he hasn't taken that much of it he's taken it, it might affect him a little bit if he might be able to be like saved like Starlight comes and just drags him out of like like of the area of where it's at or something like that I also am like thinking that Newman might not Homelander, but Newman's getting the dive because of it. She's the only she's in possession of it. So what if something happens where like they're trying to get it and all of that, and in the middle of it, it gets exposed. Butcher and Yui get out of there, but Newman, her being full blown suit, ends up. Yeah, I, I I agree. I think it's more plausible that Newman is going to die in the next season and then Homelander will be the end game. Uh, because the show started with Butcher's hate towards Homelander and it has to end with his, you know, hatred towards Homelander. They yeah. have to kill each other <laughs> or something. You know, it, because if they kill Homelander too early, um, who's left? I mean, as, as villainous as Newman is and some of the others that are out there, they just can't talk. You know what Homeland stands for. You know he is the ultra uh, white supremacist. Uh, you know 
uh, uh, every dictator in the universe type thing. You know, he is literally becoming the the, uh, the villain of, of the entire like world. Hitler's yeah. wet dream. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you know, I mean, which stands to reason. I mean, he was. Uh, they said that Compound V was created by a Nazi scientist, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, in the before World War Two. So. Yeah, because of the chick too. Uh, the chick that Stormfront. Was... Yeah. Yeah. I think it's funny that he kind of got disgusted by her, but at the same time, now he's literally becoming her. I mean, he didn't really... He he was upset, you know, that she got killed, but he was more upset that they were trying to take Ryan away from him. And Stormfront didn't really give a shit about the kid. No, <laughs> she wanted to have new kids with him, you know. Like we have our own. And we all know Homelander has issues when it comes to love, you know. Like, this is the first time... That there's something out there that could love him unconditionally, no matter who or what he does. You know what I mean? Because they would just accept him. You're my dad. You know, uh, that doesn't, that's never happened to Homelander before. You know, he always had to be somebody or do something to get uh, admiration. You know? And now, even with killing that one dude on camera, and suddenly the people are just like, hell yeah, you know, he just. I think Homelander is going to completely let loose in the next season. I think it's just, it's, if you were surprised by the violence in this finale for Gen V, I think we have not seen anything. No, we have not seen anything. You know. Um, let's see, uh, what else did I, I have some notes here. Um, uh, I think they're pretty... Oh, man, I wrote down that Homelander needs to get laid. Oh, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> he's, very... he's not giving those hand jibbers anymore. <laughs> yeah, he, he, needs to, he needs to really get laid. Maybe that'll take some of the, the edge off. Um, oh, and I also love when he... when he and the, During the finale, when he first arrived on the scene, it's like heroic music that starts to deflate, like, wah, 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 you know, because it's not it's not a hero's welcome. I really thought... Like, I didn't know it was, was going to be, like, full-fledged Homelander, like with the wine and everything. I thought it was just going to be him and just coming and just like laser beaming people and just be like, okay, I'm done. Whatever. Not my, not I'm my surprised he didn't just laser beam the helicopter and be like, you know what? I didn't need them anyways, you know, or something. Because it's no, it's no uh, secret that he doesn't really give a shit about Ashley or any of those people and stuff like that. And and now with his own fame, like we said before, you know, he, he doesn't really need them either. He can kind of just be himself. No, he doesn't need anybody. And stuff. But I, I think we should move on to uh, now our other, um, you know, big news is uh, Loki uh, season finale is this week. Yeah. Uh, I am looking forward to that. I mean, you caught all up, right? I'm all caught up. Uh, so, first of all, what did you think about the, the, the season so far? The season so far? Ooh, I'm, I'm digging it. I Okay, so one thing I'm really loving is constantly, which they do all the time is the random historical references so with um oh what's his name uh he ended up being frank morris from the alcatraz escape yeah oh yeah. casey yeah casey that's it no i really love that that yeah they back. even got the details down to the paper mache heads and stuff that they used to, yeah. to hide the or to pretend they were still sleeping and stuff yeah no i agree that was that they really outdid themselves there everything about uh, uh episode three with the chicago's world's fair you know, I mean, the detail was so amazing. It looked like like they made the whole fair all over again. It was amazing. They even referenced H.H. Home. But, uh... Um, yes. And there was a Milwaukee Texas. shout out, too. Yeah, with the cheaper taxes. <laughs> 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 I wonder if that's true. We'll have, to, we'll have to look into that when we do our next film project. It really is cheaper taxes here. Oh, man. But, um... What, what do you think of Victor Timely himself? Victor Timely is, and he's so innocent. <laughs> like, I, I don't think that he has any knowledge of what's going on. He's learning as he goes. But he is a, he is a shyster, though. Oh, yeah. That's like, just like him. I love that. Chicago. That's the first thing that Loki recognized about him. He's like, you're a con man. I love it. You know? <laughs> like, that, that's what I like to do. You know? Um, I do agree. I think that he wants to be good. And I think that's really especially important later on. When Miss Minutes is all getting ready to be shut down, and she, you know, delivers that line, you're like, "You'll never be him," you know. It's like I think that's what spurs him on 
to do the heroic thing and be the one to fix the, the loom himself, you know, not letting anybody else sacrifice themselves for it. But I also think it's a little bit of hubris in there. He wants to be important. And because he really lights up when he meets OB, and OB's like, you're the guy, the guy I learned everything from, you know, Mr. Victor Timely. Right, they get besties. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he loves the admiration, you know. And you can even when they first when when they first introduced him during the the Chicago World Fair, you know he takes those uh, like you know j- uh, uh, jabs at like you know Edison the way you know the way he says it he's like you know that guy Edison you know he's nothing he stole all his shit anyways you know that's kind of what Kang is you know the more I think about it you know everything so far that has happened in the show. Looks like somebody else invented it and Kang took credit for it. It looks like Loki is creating the TVA, OB created the technology, and Kang just kind of came and said it's mine. Oh no, that's pretty much exactly how it happened. Like, do my bidding without knowing you're doing my bidding. Mm-hmm. I think that is the core personality of Kang. Although I don't think that Victor Timely is Kang. I don't, or is he who remains? I mean, that is always the, the everybody's big theory now, right? Is, you know, uh, that the show is Big Loop and Ouroboros, and we're going to get, it's going to connect back to the beginning, and we'll see that Victor Timely becomes uh, uh, he who remains. I don't think so. I, I think know. that uh, uh, he who remains is, a, is just another variant. He really is from the 31st century that. In, in order to sh- ensure his success, he did remove a younger version of himself and place him back in time to, to grow and then have all this stuff happen, but it, that it would make sure that the technology exists so that when he came along, he could take it and use it for himself. Right? So he kind of just <laughs> he made someone else himself. Yeah. He, he made himself a patsy, basically. He <laughs> yeah. made another version of himself as a patsy so that everybody else would be all worried about Victor Timely. And here he just comes and be like, oh, while you guys were all busy doing that stuff, the you know the, the notes and technology, that shit survived all the way to the 31st century. I, I dug it up and then just used it for myself. So as long as it is created at some point, he can use it in the future and then build the new timeline from there, you know? I think, uh, at least that's, that's my, my theory and stuff, because during the, the final trailer, there's a moment where they go, you know, you won't believe, and then believe flashes, or it just says the word lie on the screen and stuff. I think that because that, that is the big uh, twist of the season, is that they're setting it up so it's so obviously going to be a loop. It's so obviously going to loop on itself, but that's, that's the lie. It's not going to loop on itself, because... Uh, he who remains ultimate goal, I think, is to break free of the loop and live in, inter- in an internal timeline that never ends. You know, that yeah. never repeats itself. That always continues forward. That he never has to worry about the multiversal war or the other chains. You know, and he's each time he goes back and changes just a little bit or gives himself just a little bit more information or something that he learned and stuff like that, uh, so that he can, you know, whatever, break free of that nexus event because. What the Nexus event has to be him dis- discovering time travel, right? That no matter what, he can't do whatever he needs to do without discovering it. But if he makes a separate loop happen in the past where he's not part of it and he's from the extended branch off of that, then he doesn't have to worry about repeating the same thing. He can just move on. Yeah. So as, if he can create a self contained loop in the past, then that will always happen and then. And then his timeline is insured. I, I, I wish I was a theoretical scientist. Right? To I'm like, that's, that's, better. <laughs> that sounds like anything better than I would have explained at all. <laughs> I also, so you brought up uh, Frank and stuff, and then there's uh, uh, B15. Her character, is, her, her, her variant self, is, uh, uh, is actually a character from the comic books called Verity Willis. Uh, Verity Willis in the comics is a woman, as a baby, she swallowed an Asgardian ring, and it gives her the power to basically know when people are lying, which is kind of fitting because B fifteen just knows when Loki's bullshitting, knows yeah. when anybody is bullshitting, and she doesn't bullshit anyone. That's the like a big part of that 
uh, scene with her and uh, 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 General uh, Docs, right? When she comes there and she tells her, hey, I need your help to fix it. it just, it's, you know, we, not, we might not see eye to eye on shit, but you better, you know, you believe me when I say I want to protect all these people. And General Docs, like, she's like, hell yeah, I mean, B-15 has integrity, you know? So it makes sense that her variant version is Verity William, Willis. But the other two, uh, you know, e, uh, OB is somebody named Professor A.D. Doug, and, uh, and then you have Mobius is Dawn. I couldn't find anything in the comics for that. You know, I mean, I guess it makes. I mean, maybe maybe Mobius being Dawn is like a reference to Mad Men or something. He was a salesman and, and whatever. Yeah, exactly. Maybe maybe that that's that's very thin. You know, but Ad Doug, I there's nothing I could I could find on that. But I do find it interesting that he is a science fiction writer. Um, there is a few times in the in the Marvel comics, but more, most notably. There's the one from Fantastic Four where they leave the comic book page into Jack Kirby's studio and they meet Jack Kirby and they're like, are you God? You know, and he's like, I created you on the page, you know, technically I'm your God, but you know, somebody created me and so on and so forth, right? I wonder if, if, I don't think they'll go down this route, but I wonder if it is a, a nod to that, like the that OB nod. wrote the story and then this one of the realities of what's happening is because he wrote the story and then you know like a what if type scenario what if he is the author of everything going on because they do play a lot with the you know the whole uh, uh, the, the paradox uh, the bootstrap bootstrap paradox right um, Obi wrote the TVA novel uh, and, and invented the technology but then Loki gives his past self that book did he do it again? Yeah. Alright. <laughs> Whatever. We always have that. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so, what was I saying? We were at... Oh, we were talking about the, the fiction writing. Yes. And, and, and such. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know if they'll, if they'll do anything with, uh, with that particularly. I mean, it, it's kind of be a little weird to just suddenly have uh, it would take uh you know those movies where they were like they they wake up and then they said oh it was all a dream anyways or or that uh, you ever seen that show saint elsewhere where the kid like shakes the snow globe and the entire show took place in his imagination and no but yeah like i think that's it would if they turned out to do it like that uh, you know ob wrote the whole story i think that would uh kind of ruin it but it is interesting that they use the bootstrap paradox to have him you know, first of all, they did it with Timely, right? You have Ravona going back to the 1800s or whatever to give young Victor the TVA handbook so that he can grow up, learn the TVA handbook, invent the things, and then come back to the TVA to fix the loom, right? So that's one paradox. And then uh, OB learned everything from Victor Timely, wrote the TVA handbook. Loki goes back into 1994, gives him the handbook, you know, so that he can rebuild the time pad, which creates another. It's it's more of a spiral than it is a loop, if you think about it. <laughs> like it's, it, yeah, like I don't know how. I mean, it is still an Ouroboros, I guess, because it, it all has to start at the same point. But it's a very weird-looking loop. Uh, I I want to say. Um. Oh, that that makes that reminds me. So, obviously, he who remains has that special-looking temp pad, right? It's all like a big old disc and crack. Unlike all the other people who have basically a flip phone, right? Um, is so when 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 Loki gathers all the, the remaining other variants and stuff like that, none of them have any memory. They all went back to their original timelines. None of them have any memory of Loki except for Sylvie, right? Now, two questions come here. Uh, one question is how did he know? I mean, I guess they just put in coordinates or whatever to find Sylvie. But how did how did he know to go back to Broxton to that McDonald's to find Sylvie? Her original branch was wiped out. We know that, right? She was kidnapped as a little girl and went on the run, right? So we have no idea how her life was supposed to turn out. I mean, for all we know is that she grew up to become powerful Loki and decided, you know what, I just want to work at McDonald's. You know, yeah, <laughs> I mean, she just wanted, yeah, to, she just wanted to work at McDonald's or something, you know. But um, 
So maybe it, that's why Loki doesn't even question it or so. But why is it that she does remember? Is it because when the loom explodes, uh, we know Loki has is basically a human tempad himself. So he, he you know, he, uh, uh, whatever, time, time slipped back into the past or the future or wherever, right? Did she... Like nope up out of there using the temp she, pad right before it hit. That's exactly what I think happened. That's the only like it's the only explanation because because she does say to him, you know, yeah, I was there. I remember, you know, everybody getting sucked it's... up. But then again, she's also kind kind of surprised when things start to turn to spaghetti. Well, because she didn't expect like her. She, I don't know. I think she has a little bit of a tunnel vision that her one job and one thing to do is to kill. You know. The one that remained. I don't think that she's paying attention to the bigger picture right. of everything. And Loki is trying desperately to get her to look at the bigger picture. I mean, I I think she starts to realize it. Like, because right, right when she goes up to her car, she has her little McDonald's and her cup. She puts them on the hood of the car. As she's unlocking the door, you can see it. It starts to spaghettify, and then you can even see it in the rearview mirror. And then she looks at it, and she's like, "Huh." And then at first, I didn't even notice it the first time I watched it because I thought she was just realizing I feel Loki coming or something. But no, she was actually looking at her bag as it disappeared. And she was like, I could have sworn I put it there. You know? Um, and then, like, you know, little things later, like uh, when, they're, when, when the two of them go to the bar, she orders two shots, right? She drinks her shot, gets up, and then Loki reaches for the table and his shot is down. So it's already forgetified. And then, of course, the big record scene where, he, where everybody's forgetified. So, you know? She. She, she doesn't really look surprised. She looks depressed about it. She's like, I was hoping that it wouldn't come to this. Yeah, like, almost like proven wrong slash, like, maybe if I would have done something or maybe if I listened, you know, we could have gotten something done. I, I, instead, I was holding them back the whole time. Yeah, I mean, yeah, no, I agree with that. Like, I, because she, I mean, she does, she, she is a good counterpoint to Loki. Loki just is jumping at whatever he can right now. Can we try this? Can we try this? Whatever, we'll fix it. She kind of like, well, hold on a second, take a step back, look at it. Is this even going to work out? I mean, like, I, I do like that she brings up a que those questions. Like, if you, if I told you, you were going to uh, uh, die tomorrow, right? For example, like, I, I mean, for, for sure, this was happening. This is how it's going to happen, whatever. You know, that you aren't able to unknow that so that affects your choices today you would have to do certain things today before that happens because you want to ensure that those things get done or whatever right so given that in the context of the variants telling them hey if you don't work for the tva everything falls apart you know life as you know it goes to nothing right how can they say no you're you kind of are taking their choices yeah, and like especially if you just got told that that's a lot to unravel, and then you have like a million questions. So that's also a big take. Yeah, they time. take it pretty well in stride. Consider, I mean, like, Ob makes sense. He's science fiction writer, you know, and even even uh, B fifteen, you know, she's a medical expert and stuff. She kind of looks at it properly in a very science and whatever way. But gentle. Don and Frank, you know, you know, Mobius and, and Casey. I mean, Casey's. He's from Alcatraz in the 60s. You know, <laughs> he, he was excited about a boat. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just want to be free. I'm like, what's all this? Like, yeah, exactly. Like, you know, you're kind of ask, asking him to imprison himself in a workplace, you know, for the rest of eternity, like, you know. I just broke out of a prison. You're going to put me back in another prison? Right. And Don, <laughs> Don, I mean, yeah, he wants to get back to his kids and stuff. He does mention it. But otherwise, he takes it pretty well in stride he's like i guess i mean mobius is a cool name you know yeah. <laughs> he just kind of <laughs> goes with it no that's another question do you think mobius's wife first of all do you think so none of the timelines uh really address any other superheroes uh, uh nobody else brings up any kind of superhero right uh, uh and this is a big question i've seen online is because they make a point you know loki was uh the, our loki here he was taken right at the end of the battle for new york right right in 2012 right and then when they go back to recruit b15 for example she's in 2012 new york 
but there's like no screams, no destruction, nothing going on and stuff. Do you think it's none of these timelines experienced superheroes or experienced the snap or anything like that? Or, uh, you know, yeah, I don't know. Like, do they are they from those kind of realities? I think or that I think that the heroes do exist. I just feel like they just didn't have the need to like bring up anything like or anything like in the background or anything like. Don't give me Yeah, because I'm kind of surprised, you know, like when, you know, like for example, like if, when when you know Loki's laying it all out for Mobius, he doesn't just say, you know, why don't you get like Iron Man or something to help you, you know, like nobody, nobody even like says anything about like the Avengers could help you, you know. There was one Thor reference, but that was just more like a haha moment, but. Uh, when they were walking up and they saw the Thor. The oh day. yeah, well that was that was from the the 1800 timeline. I'm talking yeah. about the after everything was reset. Yeah. Those timelines, none of them brought up any kind of superhero. I don't think Loki would bring up like asking for a superhero's help because I don't think that they would help him or believe him. I guess that's true. Because none of them like they all seem fine with his request in a way. It's just it's a little weird. I mean I guess maybe they. For the sake of the story, they only have six episodes. They just kind of had to move it along, you know. Like, like here's what they look like. This you get your your get you know your fan service. This is where they came from. This is their origins. But now we got to move on from that. Also, the last time that they saw Loki or any of the Avengers saw Loki, technically, is he was in handcuffs. Right, and which, <laughs> that's why I'm saying none of them are afraid of Loki either. His face would have been, especially like. Like for for B fifteen, it's in two thousand twelve. But for the others, well, and and OB is nineteen ninety four. But for the others, it's it's well in the twenty twenties. They would know his face, especially after if, the whole yeah. Uh, if he you know he's part of the reason Thanos came to the planet and snapped people and all that stuff like that. You know, if Moby say his, he says his wife is long gone, if his wife was snapped away, you know he would know Loki's face or at least. Partly responsible. It was all over the news, like yeah. flying all around New York at least. Like. Yeah, because he does. He, I mean, yeah, he doesn't show up with his horns and his costume, but I mean, it's Loki. He even says, "I'm Loki." You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> how many do you know that? You right? know what I mean? So Loki, what did I hear that before? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I, I don't. I don't know. It's just. It was a very. It was one of the questions that stuck out to me when I was watching it. Um. Oh, I also love for the last episode that the theme when they played it, they played it backwards and forwards at the same time. Oh yeah, because it was time folding in on itself. That was really cool. Um, let's see here. Oh, uh, here you go. Here's another question. So, all right. So you have the la- the latest episode where he goes back and he recruits them all, and basically all it is is for him to learn how to control his time slipping. Now. Yes, he gave the TVA handbook back to, to OB in 1994, helped him invent all that stuff, and so on and so forth. But now that he has the ability to time slip, and he time slips back to before the loom exploded, did any of that stuff actually happen? Mm. So, yeah. so Like, I, will it have any impact on the future? Does it matter? So, yeah, so you can just go back again. Did he erase an entire loop? He probably was going to have to, like, yeah, erase a whole entire loop to try to do it again and make sure that Victor Timeline didn't go out there and turn into spaghetti again. Right. I mean, I'm assuming that's what the next episode's going to be. It's going to, the first half of the episode is going to be a whole bunch of, you know, Groundhog Day uh, scenarios, right, where he goes and he goes, all right, let's try this. Nope, that, nope. That didn't work. That didn't work. Try hitting the red button this time. You know, yeah, like, like a montage. Yeah, it's, gonna, yeah, it's probably going to be a montage of, of, of people getting spaghettified and shit happening. You know, and then until he finally figures out, you know, maybe that I have to go out there, you know, because I have the ability to stop time or control time or do something with time, you know, that the, the radiation doesn't affect me or something, you know, uh, uh, and then he can do the thing, you know. But, but yeah, like, because a lot of people are talking about, oh, you know, this perfectly sets up, you know, uh, uh, how OB, you know, OB's creating, or Loki's creating the TVA, OB creates the technology for the TVA, and I'm like, well, but if he goes back to before the loom explodes, then and changes everything that happens after them, then none of that happened or did it happen, because you know, like the time tra- travel logic in in Marvel is a little bit <laughs> whatever All over. you know. I mean, you have the Hulk in Endgame saying yes, you know it happened no matter what. Even if you go back in time, you still had to go back in time. So everything that happened up until you went back in time, you just created a new branch. 
But if they're convert, if they're combining everything into a sacred timeline, then they are erasing those branches. So then that means that never happened, or are they going to leave that branch, or is that you know what I mean? Like how how does that how does that fit in? You know, and that that leads me to my prediction. I think that instead of creating a sacred timeline, they're go what they're what they're going to have to do. What's going to blow audiences away is they're going to destroy the movie. They're actually going to have to uh, 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 let it, like, get rid of it so that the, the time can flow freely, which leads them into the multiversal war and all the Kangs and stuff like that. They right. have to let it happen. That no matter what they try, it won't work, you know. Now, whether or not this is He Who Remains' his original plan so that he can be born and so on and so forth and do all the things, you know, that I don't know. But um, I do think that's where the series itself will end, is that Loki will be in charge of the TVA at the end, but he will have to have, like, it'll, like, the TVA will have to exist now to police all the other timelines, look like their, like, their last mission will be like, all right, we, we, we destroyed the loom, all timelines are now open, everything is existing and running simultaneously, now our job is just to hunt down the kings. That actually. You know, like instead of policing the timeline and, 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 and branch and, and, and pruning branches and stuff to make one timeline, let's just hunt down the Kangs. They're the only real problem. Like they're they're the whole reason for this whole right. situation in the first place. So just let it go, and then we'll take care of it. Right. Let them exist. All the people exist. They're innocent except for the Kangs. We'll just get rid of them. Like I think that is some like the middle ground that Sylvie is looking for. You know, they're not policing all of free will. Just kegs, <laughs> which I think she could be okay with because her whole thing is like, well, as soon as I run into one, I'm going to kill him anyway. So, well, Loki's like, that's perfect. That's all we want that's you to all. do. Yep. <laughs> Go around, find some, you know. Um, also, did you notice Obi's lab in 1994 looks exactly like the engineering bay? Oh, yeah. In no, the TVA. Yeah. Even the, the pneumatic tube thing, is it's all there. And then the curved wall. It's, do you think... So my another one of my theories was that the TVA or the Citadel at the end of time is what's left over of whatever timeline they they're working from that version of Earth. Uh, you think that like he basically just built a shield, a barrier, or whatever around the lab, and then just took that into the future, and let the rest of the planet there. explode, and then just built off from there. Either that or. Ob just really likes that space, or likes that type of space. Exactly, he wants an exact replica of his old timeline, or you know. That could be it. He just missed his home, so he rebuilt it. Yeah, he's like, I know this like the back of my hand. I know where everything is. I don't want anything new. Makes me think of those uh, Star Trek episodes where they trick people by going to the holodeck and stuff just by recreating their own homes and stuff like that. (laughs) Like Ob will never, never. uh, He who reigns creates an exact replica of it. And then just brings Obi there, and he's like, "You'll never know that he left. He, he left Earth because he's in his in his office all the time. It's the same exact place. Like he's in, he's all the way down, like in the basement. Like, although he does seem to know his way around the TVA, so he does have to know. That yeah, he's no longer on Earth. But what's kind of cool is uh, where he's at. That particular uh, 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 building and the, the location; those are old testing sites for like atomic weapons and, and, and you know, space travel and rockets and all that stuff like that. That's actually where those places are, which I thought was kind of cool. Like that, so it makes sense that Obi would ha- like own like an old building in the middle of nowhere like that, you know, because <laughs> that's what you know they were mostly abandoned back then. Um, what is the sig- this is a good question? What is the significance of Loki traveling to Time Theater Twenty Five? Time Theater Twenty Five. Yeah, so at the beginning of the, the, the episode 5, you know, he jumps all around the TVA. Now, we know most of the significance, right? The one where he goes into the main uh, main main room, whatever, work office and stuff like that, is so that he can get the book, so he can pocket the book and bring it back to OB, right? We know he jumps to the other timelines of the, the other variants, you know, the Mobius and so on and so forth, so that he can recruit them later. Why does he go back to Time Theater 25? What? That's not even the time theater that he was interrogated at. So, why did he go there? What's significant about that room? Oh. 
I actually can't put a finger on why it was so it's significant. It, it was just because every scene so far feels like it serves a purpose. It could serve a purpose in the next episode. That could be. The, like, yeah, wait, maybe we just haven't was, seen the result of why why you need to be I've there. I've been here before. Or something like that. Or I, right. Like, there's some sort of something. Like, uh, episode one and episode four with Loki pruning himself. You know, the, 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 the overlap on himself, yeah. right? We, uh, so, yeah, maybe it could be that he needs to go to Time Theater 25 in the next episode. That there's something there, you know. But it was just, it, it, it was weird. I, when I was watching, I was like, that's the only place that he goes that I can't make any sense out of. That I have no idea why he went there in the first place, you know <laughs> what I mean? Because, like I said, I mean, maybe... I was like, I was like, is this the room where everybody died in? No, because he does go to that room and he sees the stool. So that's a different room, you know. Uh, this is, a, and it has the table with the little view screen thingy on it, but I'm like, yeah, but in the original uh, season one, you know, it's not Time Theater 25, it's a different number or something. I, I, I can't think of it off the top of my head, but I know it's a different room. So that's not that either. So I was like, maybe somebody was in that room. And they like spaghettified right before they, he they, got there. Yeah, like he was like, I need to talk. Oh, you're dying. <laughs> someone was there, but he probably was there maybe at a different time. Maybe, like, uh, like. Well, they did too say late or too early. they did say that his whole time slipping is triggered by who, right? Like, yeah. That's the, the, the thing that he figures out, right? So it's like whoever he needs to talk to, or thinks about, or whatever. That's where he goes. You know. So yeah, you could be right. Maybe there was somebody there that he needed to talk to. You know, maybe it was Victor Timer. Maybe that's. Where he was supposed to be, you know. Or watch it be like, man. Yeah, it could be, it could be himself, you know, that he was there Cause earlier. Because he, he got to everybody, but he didn't. He created, a, he created a pinpoint for himself later so that he can go back to that, you know. He just had to think about, I was in this room. And then he goes back to there, you know. And he's like, oh, now you're here. Right. Could be. <laughs> um, so, also, this uh, Zaniac is a character in the comics. Right, uh, uh, basically, almost exactly the way they showed it in the movie. There's an actor named Brad Wolf. Uh, he plays a horror movie villain. Uh, he kind of loses his job or whatever, goes crazy and stuff, and then actually becomes the Zaniac, becomes the monster in the, in the comics. Now, we haven't seen that yet, but do you think we will? Do you think there's going to be a timeline where they show Brad Wolf full mutant monster man? I don't think they're going to do it this season. No. I do like that they, because they put at the, in the beginning, opening credits, you have uh, him saying, you know, like, lines from that movie, and then when they're at the bar with Sylvie in the halfway point of the show, or of the episode, they have that machine, the Zaniac arcade machine, and then at the very end, after the credits finish, you have that audio clip of him going, game over, loser, you know, put it in the corner. Like, they keep bringing up Zaniac. Maybe it's just a cheeky reference, but I think... It might just be a cheeky reference, or maybe just something that they're just, like, gearing you up for maybe for the next season. But I don't know if, like, I, don't, I think it's a little bit... I don't know. I'm just trying to figure out a way that it will be incorporated in this last episode, you know? Because where, where did we leave Brett? I mean, the last thing we know is Sylvie uh, uh, enchanted him, he prunes Ravona, and then they kind of steal Victor, and they go and they, they do the loom thing. They kind of just leave brad in that room yeah so we don't know what he's actually doing up until the loom explodes i mean maybe i maybe he could be of some importance you know like i wouldn't say that he's important enough to go send out of the loom although they might try to sacrifice him because they're like well whatever it's just brad you yeah know? it's like screw, <laughs> screw this guy like you know but um i mean i feel like they put a lot of emphasis on his character this season that oh, he can't just his imp, his role in the series can't just be pruning Ravona, you know, which reminds me, we're gonna, from the trailer I, we're definitely gonna see the void and we're gonna see her meeting Elias I wonder how that's gonna turn <laughs> out, you know um, maybe he maybe he's gonna bring her back you know, or, or I don't know, I, I just I, I don't see them completely just going well it doesn't matter you know he pruned her that's that's the end of brad's story i feel like because they keep mentioning zaniac and keep mentioning him that there's something that maybe even if it just ends with with loki going all right brad you get to go home 
you know, at the very final scene of the thing, you get to go home and live your life as whatever. And shit. he's like, really? You know, and that leads into the Midnight Suns or something down the line. Yeah. That would be or, cool. Or they did something like a quick reference, like a reference to it, like in the post credits. Right. Like, like Loki gives everybody a choice. Do you want to stay in the TVA and continue what we're doing? Or do you want to go back to the, to the you know, like, uh, timeline where you can live out your life? I think that is probably the most plausible uh, uh, ending for Brad or anyone because I mean I highly doubt that you know the, the core four right Casey uh, Mobius B15 and uh, OB I don't think they're ever going to you know I think it would be hard like for Casey I don't think it would be a hard choice <laughs> <laughs> why, why would you want to go back to prison no, although the, what's cool is like even though everybody's like holy shit he was such a sweet guy and he's so like loves engineering and everything like that you know I can't believe he turned out to be a thief well, we do remember his drawer was full of infinity stones and other jewels and things that he just kind of collected. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like, people use them as paperweights, you know, but he likes shiny things, you know, like it was always there in the mind. Just steal that. I love that. Like the first thing we see is when he's in Obi's lab is he sees a drill and he just pockets the drill, you know, like <laughs> there's no reason to take it. It's just, what are you going to drill? You know I mean? But why not? I guess, you know. Um, oh, here's something. Uh, the credits at the end of the latest episode, each each name that comes on the screen has a letter that's falling off. The letters spell out, I vow to always remember the days when I uncover a hidden gem in the, in the small old bookstore I stumbled upon. Oh, wow. Is that a message from OB? Or from Loki to OB? I think that's it from OB. I'm always going to think of it. That's from it's OB. It's got to be a reference to his books. Yeah. That, that's definitely. Oh. <laughs> uh, I'm really thinking it's OB, but. It has to be his it books. Has to be. He's the only. I mean, he's yeah. the writer. We, we, we see it. He's the only one who gets like in a super extended you know, flashback where it, where it doesn't show any other characters, just him. You know, he goes to the bookstore, he tries to buy his own book, and tries to sneak a few off the shelf, which, you know, I, I'm going to try to do that someday. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, but like, you know, uh, the way it's worded, you know, a hidden gem in a small old, old bookstore, you know, it has to be a message to him or, or something to, to like remind him of like... where he came from or keep him going. Like maybe it's, maybe it's Kang. Or he who remains. This is how he found. Maybe he found. OB. Maybe he found the TVA handbook. It happened to be at an old bookstore. Right. Like like he made, yeah that or or one of his science fiction stories you know told the story of this time traveling conqueror and shit like that you know and all the things that happened like maybe Ob ends up writing a book about all his adventures that he had here you know and stuff and then publishes that book and then you know that is how. In the very far future, in the 31st century, Nathaniel Richards, you know, he who remains Kang, whatever, he finds this book, he reads it, and he's like, this, I could make this happen, this sounds, or that is me, you know, or something, and that's, that's the nexus point. <laughs> that's the whole, the whole nexus point of everything. That is, that is actually where it all starts. I did not even notice that. Yeah, it's weird, right? right? That's, that's, so cool. <laughs> that's so cool. I love when they put little things little like in there because thing. everybody's focused on all the big stuff we see. But like I said, the whole show, um, the way it's presented, Marvel, Mar Mar it, it, the timeline cannot be fixed. If it is fixed, then they're going to have to break it again, which seems repetitive. You know, in, whether it's in Deadpool 3 or whatever, because we know Deadpool 3... Uh, the plot revolves around the TVA hunting Deadpool for crossing timelines and you know, playing with Cable's device, yeah. right? So we do know that that's going to be coming into effect. So, it, but if they break the, if he breaks the timeline again, it's kind of redundant, right? I, I, I really seriously think that Loki, the big, you know, switch, the big surprise or whatever, is that he can't fix it, that they find another way or whatever. But the timeline will. <clears throat> You know, will expand, will will fully go its thing. So that 
every, and, and so everybody's all focused on, on on it being a closed loop, and and I I think they need to expand that loop because everybody everybody so uh, the other thing that everybody focuses on is the fact that Victor Tiny is from the 1800s, and they're like, oh, automatically that has to be he who remains. Why? He who remains at the end of season one literally says a version of myself in the 31st century started it all. Yeah. So that still has to happen even if even if he uh, if Victor Timely does become he who remains other stuff still has to happen before he even decides to go back in time and, and do any of that stuff. You know, uh, there has to be a Kang before him. Now, whether or not it's the Kang from that we saw in Quantum Mania because I don't think he's dead. I think he just got sucked in his probability matrix, and now... Oh, no, he's not dead. Yeah, just like Ant-Man, there was like a billion Ant-Man running towards and stuff. I think that's all that's happening to Kang. There's a whole bunch of them now, you know, exploding and, and, and constantly being, you know, whatever, birthed or whatever you want to call it, inside the orb. And uh, for all we know, uh, you know, the rebels or somebody in, in, the, in the quantum realm is going to find that orb and be like, wow, what is this thing? Drop it, it breaks open, and all the Kangs pop out you know what i mean but then again they also showed the post credit scene of the council of kings there's already a bunch of kings so i don't know how to reconcile all that but <laughs> yeah we all we know that there's a bunch of kings out there so i almost want to think there's like two kings that out my head but then one of them just went out of the time remember one of the kings like you know like an egyptian pharaoh so I, yep. yeah so i was like thinking at first like maybe he's the og he's not the og maybe he's just like Maybe like not like a defective or a rejected variant of Kang because he's not with all the Kangs or talking with all the Kangs. He's in normal, like living a normal life, being a con man. Right. That's where I, I when I when I thought about it, I was like, that's why it makes sense to me that some at some point in time, Kang went back, kidnapped a younger version of himself, and started placing himself in different timelines, yes. and. He who remains placed himself in the 1800s to hide himself and said that's the perfect timeline to hide. You know, all the other ones placed themselves back in time and then tried to conquer from that timeline. But by placing himself in the 1800s, you know, uh, um, he couldn't take over the world at that time because there were so many others. It's like a safe place. Like, all right, if if I Put you back in you know the pharaoh times and stuff like that and put out technology you know hell even bottled water would seem amazing and allow you to take over the world you know what i mean but in the 1800s especially around the scientific and technological revolution everybody's coming out with invention so you don't you're not special it's a perfect place to hide even if you can't stop yourself from inventing things people are just kind of like yeah i've seen that before. you're blinding it you know like 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 he compared himself to edison and tesla at the, at the expo those are two people who are also doing the same thing so he doesn't make any waves essentially I, I feel like that's why he was the that's the perfect place for him to hide and and then maybe eventually become he, uh, he who remains i still don't think so i think that he who remains uh is a totally different kang and did that as a MacGuffin, you know as a as a distraction oh, yeah. so that he could make sure that he continues his path so no one's you know? like fucks him at all right because otherwise somebody could just go back kill victor timely then and then none of this should happen right what does it still happen it's like it's <laughs> you know <laughs> like i don't know but you know what i mean uh there has to be a way to ensure that it happens you know um and we know that each time kang goes back you do one of these things it creates a new universe a new timeline right because even the council of kings says that we wipe out the timelines who don't submit to us we keep the other ones we've conquered multiple realities right i mean even the, the king in the in ant-man says that to ant-man i fought every version of the avengers right i've killed thor i've killed this i've killed that right like you know multiple versions of them we've conquered multiple timelines Meaning that they didn't prune those, they kept those around. Yeah. You know, the only one we know who gets rid of extra timelines is 
he's going to remain, right? But that means if he's getting rid of these timelines, then how can these other ones exist? I think it's because the sacred timeline is in its own bubble, right? And he wants to do. He wants to make sure that that bubble doesn't burst, that nobody can enter the bubble, but nothing from the inside the bubble will cause it to be accessible from the outside, right? His goal is to make sure that that keeps going, and then wants to kill everything outside of it, right? So he has to create a loop for anybody inside the bubble to be distracted by, so that he can keep focusing on going forward or whatever. Maybe his death thing, birth, whatever. I mean, Sylvie does kill him, so he does die. And he does know that he's going to die, and he's like, I, I, you know, I already planned for this. But I still don't think we've seen the culmination of that plan. I think we think we've seen it, I th but we actually haven't. Yeah. There's something that's going to be completely out there. Because of this, and Loki's focus on this, he does something that's going to, like I said, open up the, the sacred timeline for a bunch of versions to go maybe expand the bubble or something like that, which then creates a timeline for he who remains to be born on, and then he can come back and conquer. You know? I, I, I kind of think that's what's going to happen. <laughs> that not Victor Timely himself is just on the sacred timeline and becomes he who remains over time. No. I think that just ca is a catalyst for another branch to be formed, and then a version of Kang from the 30, or, you know, whatever, from the 31st century can then go back to, and swap, swap places and then move on from there. Okay. You know, yeah. go back in time, kill Loki, take over the TV, you know, and then move on from there. You know, I think that's what's going to happen. But, um, I don't know. I mean, what do you think? Do you think Victor is he who remains? I don't think they, actually, I agree with the whole distraction point. I think that possibly he who remains got killed in because he said he doesn't even know he's dead yet, maybe. And he just put him there to be all like, just since he prayed the loom. Put him there to, you know, essentially again be a distraction, so he can continue on with his work and work on the timeline. Right. Yeah. Because otherwise Loki would interfere with him or so. Yeah. <laughs> you like, know, he needs them to be focused elsewhere, focused on fixing the loom or whatever, you know, and stuff like that. And while he just then, after they do the work, he just, you know, like I said before, he's a shyster. He doesn't actually create anything. He just takes credit for other people. Like, Thanks for fixing the loom for me. Yeah, like, building me the TV. What do you think I put, what do you think I put Victor Timely there? Like, what do you think I did all this? Like, yep. Thank you. Yeah, I think that's ultimately his goal. That could be the end of the season right there. It'd be like, oh, well, you did my work for me, so thank you. I can't wait. Dude. It's going to be an hour long, too, which is really, I'm really oh, yeah. I mean, I miss the days when the Marvel show, I miss the days period when TV shows were like 24 episodes long, you know what I mean? Like, those were great. Uh, and I do, I mean, I, I can understand, okay, with streaming and stuff, especially binge watching, that you want to, you know, limit shows down to like 8, 10 hours, you know, so people can watch them in a single day. But, six episodes does not feel like enough for Loki. Like, I want more. Right. I, I feel like these kind of, they, even if they would have just spent a couple of, you know, uh, episodes separately with uh, him, you know, trying to convince the other variants, you know, like uh, 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 to come back to the TV and join them. If, to explore those timelines a little bit more, it would have been cool. Like how we got in the, the third episode when he went after Victor Timely. We really got to see the 1800s. These, the newest episode, we just got little five minute glimpses of each of these lives, and there's so many questions about those. I mean, in the end, like I said, does it really matter? I mean, if he goes back. To before the loom explodes and those things never happen anyway so i don't know you know those, those might not even be the same variants that end up becoming mobius and stuff for all we know yeah moby has an affinity for jet skis and stuff and it makes sense that his past self was a jet ski salesman or maybe that's just another branch version maybe you know whatever he's just obsessed with jet skis because he saw a version of him whatever you know like, we don't know definitively if that's their origin and why they changed their names, if Loki is the reason that they changed their names, or if that was their names in the ultimate real Like, so many questions. So many. Um, so, this also what comes out this Friday, uh, right, you know, Loki season finale Thursday night, and then Friday is the Marvels. Yay. <laughs> I, I, nothing against it. I'm just not that hyped up about it. And from what I've seen, like, 
the promotion for it is just garbage. There's like no promotion really for it. No, like the only the characters other. I care about are Spectrum and Nick Fury. Those are, <laughs> I care about Spectrum because she was really amazing in WandaVision, uh, um, and her her like her backstory and everything. As quick as it was, it was it was well done. She she's not annoying. She she got cool powers. I want to see what she can do. You know, uh, I could barely get through Ms. Marvel. It's a show for for young girls, so I mean, don't, it's not that it, the show is awful no. or anything. It's just I'm not the target demographic, you know. So I, I just didn't care. I don't really care about the whole quantum bangles thing unless it has something to do with like Eternals tech or or, or some other shit like that, like the the, the rings from Shang Chi. Uh, I, I just don't I just don't care. They don't use them the way they use them in the comics. It's kind of weird. So uh, I don't know. Maybe they'll explain it further in the movie. That might be cool. And I don't like Brie Larson as Captain Marvel. Uh, she is very much like her Civil War II counterpart, the the, the more mean and and uh, unlikable version and stuff, which is sad because Brie Larson as an actress, she's great, right? She's hilarious in, in her comedy movies and, mm-hmm. and, there's, and there's tons of other movies, like even dramatic roles and stuff like, like Room, you know, where she is... I mean, you sympathize and empathize and all that stuff with her. You, you, you know, you, you love her character. You want to see her get through it and stuff. The Marvels, I just, I don't. I, I hope she gets I'll hit see by Astro. <laughs> <laughs> see, I'll just wait when it's on Disney Plus in like a month and a half. Yeah, I don't yeah. really think this is going to be on Disney Plus. I don't even like think you'll month. have to wait that long. It'll, I think it'll be on there pretty quick. Like a month. Um, yeah, I, I don't even under, I like, I, I watch the trailers. You know. The, the 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 plot seems at least uh, overall seems pretty simple that uh, whatever energy is coming from the quantum bangles and the energy that both spectrum and captain marvel utilized for their powers is all part of one thing you know just like wanda she gets her powers by drawing from the chaos dimension uh uh you know, Captain Marvel, uh, uh, Ms. Marvel, and, and Spectrum, they all draw their powers from the quantum energy realm, quantum realm maybe, which is funny because so does Ghost, and I don't see her popping up in this movie, no. you know, which would have been kind of cool if, if she was like the fourth character they didn't show in the, in, the, in the trailers, also swapping places with them, and suddenly and everybody's like, who the hell are you, you know, and she's like, you know, I'm, you know, whatever, so and so, and I can turn invisible because I have quantum powers. But, you know, like that would be kind of cool. That would be like a holy shit! I didn't even see that coming, you know. But I, I doubt it because there's there's no no mention of Hannah Jo Kane in, in in any kind of Marvel project except for the Thunderbolts, uh, uh, which we know Ghost will be joining that. Yeah. Um, which is sad because I really liked her character. I was hoping that she. They never explained whatever happened to her. Like the last thing in Ant Man Two. Right before, you know, right around the Infinity Infinity Sagas, they went back into the quantum realm to go harness some energy so they can help cure her, fix her, right? Mm-hmm. And she needs that energy to, to survive and not phase out of reality, right? And then everybody got snapped and he got stuck in there. Did she get snapped too? And that way she didn't suffer? Or was she, if, even worse, if she didn't get snapped, did she suffer throughout <laughs> the next five years and, and like develop a hatred for Ant-Man? But they don't even mention her. In Ant Man Quantumania. No. Like, the writers either forgot or. They I think didn't they might. Care or... I, I think that. I'm not even going to mention. I was going to say, like. They're maybe they're, maybe, they're, maybe they're just concentrating on her being in the Thunderbolts, but still, you didn't do a mention. Right. They, they should have been like, like, hey, have you. Uh, uh, she, we have Michelle Pfeiffer, right? Uh, uh, what is she? Janet Van Dyne, right? She's all like. You know, you shouldn't be messing with the quantum realm. We shouldn't even go back there or whatever, blah, 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 blah. Well, they had a reason to do it beforehand, like I said, was to get the energy so that they can... Did they just stop? Was that something in the meantime where they decided, hey, you know, oh, now that I'm finally free, we can't do this anymore? Or, or like, I, they, I feel like the, they literally just forgot that the character existed. I think they forgot. Yeah, I really because, honestly think is, that there's... It's kind of sad. It kind of sucks. Because I like your character. Probably someone mentioned it, and then it was like in passing. Like, hey, what about this? Oh, yeah. Maybe there's like a deleted scene. Yeah. I haven't I haven't bought the, the, the Blu-ray yet, so I haven't watched it. Nah. Uh, but I uh, watch any of the deleted scenes yet. But my, maybe. Could be. I don't know. But like, yeah, they didn't even mention it, which is kind of sad. 
But outside of that, that's literally the only thing I can tell from the plot is that they're all because they're all entangled with the same powers. They're switching spots with each other, and, and they're gonna figure out how to stop doing. That. Okay, Whoops. like. <laughs> like I'm just not excited about that. It. Feels like, not, like, I that feels like that feels like a Disney. This would be good fodder for a Disney Plus show. Yeah, that's not for a, a major Plus show. movie. The movies are supposed to be what's furthering the plot, the old, the big plot, right? The 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 whole phase plot. That's what the movie should be focusing on. The shows were supposed to be just background information. Now, WandaVision, basically, if you didn't watch WandaVision, you had no pretense. To Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, mm-hmm. so you had to watch those two. Um, I mean, I guess Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Uh, I liked the show, but that could have been a movie. That should have just been a movie. The the plot was a little thin. You know what I mean? Yeah. That should have just been a full fledged movie. Falcon's introduction as Cap. Now you know, bam. You know that would have been cool. Instead, instead they kind of deflated it by having the show come out first. And then now, as much as I want to see uh, Brave New World, you know, we're, it's just going to be him fighting some bad guys. I wanted to see him just first coming out, showing I can do this, you know, but yeah. I, I don't know. You know, and then some of the other shows, Hawkeye at least sets up other shows, you know, which is fine. And, and so does She-Hulk, whether you like it or not, it sets up. You know, other New York based uh, hero shows like Daredevil and so forth. You know, so that's fine. That's what the shows are supposed to do. But WandaVision and now Loki uh, and stuff feel like, as much as I love Loki as a show, it's doing more to set up the universe and, and the big coming than most of the other films that have come out. I mean, Guardians of the Galaxy aside, that was a, more of a James Gunn film. That was a closing chapter to the Guardians. Yeah, it wasn't it, like really connected. It didn't need to set up uh, the Kang thing because they're out in the middle of space somewhere off, you know, off in the distance. So that I can let slide. But Quantum Mania, it while it did touch on Kang, obviously, and, and so on and so forth, it, it it needed something. It needed more, you know. Um, and Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, there wasn't a lot of multiversing. It was, you know, there was that one scene where they flew through a bunch of them, but... Not, like, during the whole duration, I like. But it also... What did it have to... It ha- I guess it introduced the idea of incursions, but it... That feels like more it's setting up for Secret Wars than it is setting up for the Kang Dynasty, which comes out first. So, I wish it would have played a little bit more into that, you know? And what, what else is really good? Oh, you have No Way Home. Uh, no Way Home... If, uh, no Way Home did a good job, at least establishing multiverse stuff you know with the whole variance thing yeah. like the ver- variance of peter parker uh you know popping up and stuff which i guess you know i i know that sony has plans of combining uh their into the spider-verse uh, saga movies with uh, mcu and stuff which is probably how we're gonna get miles uh like He's going to, like, let's say at the very end of, what's the next one, Beyond the Spider-Verse or whatever? It's the uh, part two. Yeah, I think yeah. they call it Beyond the Spider-Verse. Beyond the Spider-Verse right? part two. I think it's going to end with him going into reality. Yeah. Like, Just turning into an be like, oh, like, like, like that scene in The Simpsons where Homer's suddenly 3D'd. He's like, what the hell's going <laughs> on? You know, I think that's going to happen. And then we're gonna, that's where we're going to meet whoever plays Miles in the movies. And, it's gonna, and then Sony can, like, while the MCU continues to make spider-man movies with uh uh tom holland and so on and so forth uh like i feel like miles is going to show up in the same universe that venom is in and then that'll be the first solo spider-man movie in the sony universe with miles and be like what you know what's going on and stuff like that and he meets venom and venom is like yo i'm not actually a bad guy i'm a good guy in this stuff and he's like, well, you know where Peter is or something where Spider, you know, and stuff. He's like, I heard that name before, blah, blah, blah. And then travel into the MCU, like, yeah. whenever they do a big the, the Secret Wars movie or something down the road. Because Secret Wars isn't scheduled, I think, until, like, 2027 uh, or something like that. It's, it's, far, it's out far out there. there. You know, that gives them enough time to do the next, into, uh, the next Beyond the Spider-Verse movie and then do maybe another Venom in between to kind of tie that together. So that'd be kind of cool. Um... Let's see, uh, 
Yeah, pretty much neither. Oh, there's the. Oh, they also dropped uh, the Echo trailer uh, this oh, week. They did I did not have not seen the Echo trailer? Yet. It actually looks. It look. You seen the Punisher on Netflix? Yes. It's that, but it's Disney. Okay. It's honestly, it's the first mature rated Disney Plus show set in the Marvel universe, and it's awesome looking. Like, I don't really care about the character. I was, I'm not a big fan of things like Hawkeye or, and stuff like that. In the movies, yeah. But as far as reading the comics, I was I was never into in, into the characters themselves. Yeah. Uh, if I uh, when it came to like more streetwise heroes, I was more of a DC guy for that. But the way they did it in the show, man, it it looks it looks interesting. Now there is a quote from the showrunner who said, "Well, I'm not going to do her powers exactly the way they are in the comic books." Now a lot of people are mad about this, but I I understand why her powers in the comic books is that she can basically mimic anybody's fighting style well who else does that taskmaster we already have a taskmaster in the mcu so if if her powers are exactly the same as doing that she should have she might as well have been taskmaster herself or taskmaster 2 but we know taskmaster is coming back in the thunderbolts movie right so we don't need somebody who does the exact same thing so i'm curious if they'll just give her like super strength, super agility, you know, and stuff like that, you know, uh, Wait, or that, yeah, or that, you know, because she can't hear, you know, uh, uh, or whatever, she can like has super sight, you know, or something like, you know, whatever, you know, like super reflexes, you know, she just feels the vibrations in the air and she just knows, you know, or whatever and stuff. Maybe they'll do something like that, you know. I mean, they that's basically like a parallel or, or counterpart to Daredevil. Daredevil's blind. But he senses the vibrations like like an echolocation type thing. He can see but not see, right? You know, she can hear but not hear. You know, it'd be kind of cool. So I don't know if they're going to do anything like that. But um, regardless, the show looks awesome. I love Vincent uh, D- D'Onofrio as Kingpin. He's perfect. Yeah, he's perfect. He was, he, that was the, the perfect casting. They, they nailed it. Um, and the what's curious, though, is... Echo will also be the first uh, Marvel Disney Plus show to drop the entire season at once. Oh, they're dropping the whole thing. Yeah, no weekly episode. They're putting the entire season at once. Now, that, that is one of two things. that Either they have zero confidence in this show, like the show is garbage, but it doesn't look garbage, you know, or they're trying something new. I was about to say, they're trying, like, trying something to see, like, see if this works and we should, should, maybe we should start just doing this instead of doing weekly episodic. Right. Because... Some shows, like Loki, what's great about it is that from week to week you have something to fear of. What's going to happen next? What's going to happen to the greater whatever? Because it ties in to the phase, the overall phase. Echo doesn't. So it's smarter for them. There's not a lot to be theorizing. It's a pretty much a one single plot stretched out over six or whatever episodes, right? And stuff like that. So it makes more sense. Just drop the whole thing. People can watch it. They get their Marvel fix, you know, and there's no need for them to talk about week to week. Because that was, like, the issues with shows like uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. There wasn't really a lot to talk about. Well, what's going to happen next? I mean, Captain America's going to punch the guy. Like, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, he's going to fly in there with his wings and his shield, and he's going to knock the dude out, right? I mean, that's, that seems pretty self-explanatory, you know. Uh, it, what, is, what is Hawkeye going to do? Well, they're going to shoot people with arrows. You know, I mean, that's going to, you know, whatever. That's his thing. <laughs> right, shows like but like shows like WandaVision and Loki, where they have things that are out there happening, and where people were like, okay, what is what is going on? What is going to happen next? You know, and so I wonder if this is just Marvel's new approach. You know, they should start doing that with, with Star Wars too. I'm not a I'm not a fan of like I mean the shows are are good. Don't get me wrong. I don't want to piss off any Star Wars fans, but <laughs> but. There's a lot of that, of a lot of the shows that feel like they took a small plot point and they really stretched it out. Like, I, I recently just finally finished Ahsoka. There was like three or four episodes they could have cut out, and <laughs> and you wouldn't have noticed. You know what I mean? They, yeah. You know what I mean? And the things that I wanted to see more of, you know, they didn't show. Like, I wanted more of uh, what's Balin and uh, what's his apprentice? Um. The little blonde girl, the psycho. Yeah, I, I wanted more of their story. Instead, it was a lot of Ahsoka walking around in like Stonehenge-looking places. You know, I'm just like, okay, 
<laughs> and I didn't watch, I never watched the, the Clone Wars cartoon stuff. I mean, I watched parts of it, but I never like really watched it. So I don't, I don't feel an attachment to, uh, uh, what's the girl's name? The little Mandalorian girl who sucks at being a Jedi. <laughs> Oh, I don't feel any attachment to them. Yeah. I just, that's a whiny brat character, you know, like, <laughs> you know, and then the, everything they do is so like, you know, she, she's so much more badass with the other weapon. A Jedi, you know, doesn't, doesn't have to be lightsaber wielding, right? I mean, we saw that in uh, like World One, right? Yeah, he does not. Have uh, the, the, the dude is, I am the force and the force is with me, you know, dude and stuff like that. He was doing jedi shit without lightsabers and stuff you know so why not just let her do that let her be you know instead of blade foo it's gun foo with her blasters and stuff like that but they keep finding ways to let her lose her weapons so that she has to end up using the lightsaber and it's it just kind of drove me nuts a little bit <laughs> you know uh and then you had the whole dude pulling a luke uh the ezra right they they, they spend the entire series looking for him and then she's like, here's your lightsaber. And he's like, I don't need it. Like, bro, <laughs> come on. Like, come on. You know, uh, the force will protect. And then in the end, he has to use it anyways because he sucks with everything else. So, yeah, I, that's small gripe. I just, I uh, when it comes to the Disney Plus formula, I think they need to reevaluate what they do as movies and what they, like, some of the movies were like, man, that should have been, they're, they're, there's so much happening that that should have been the show. And then there's so many shows where, like, you could have done that in a movie, in a spin-off movie. They could have just done an Ahsoka movie, and it would have been great. People would have went to see it in theaters. And, uh, I mean, it's not like, uh, 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 what's her name? Uh, uh, Rosario Dawson. Thank you. I wanted to say Rose McGowan, and I'm like, that's wrong. No. But Rosario <laughs> Dawson, she, she is a big actress. She is. It's not like she wouldn't draw the crowds, you know, especially as a portrayal. Like, and Ahsoka. everyone petitioned, basically, for her to be... Right. Exactly. So if they would have put and, and 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 with the whole you know her uh, uh, and, and Anakin and stuff like that oh, on the big screen, that would have been amazing. People would have loved it, you know. And the story would have fit in a two-hour runtime, you know. And instead, I would have liked, you know, more of the you know other stuff, the the Galactic Senate shit and all that stuff. That could have been in the TV show, like a more political thriller set in the Star Wars universe, mm -hmm. where it's just episodes of things getting done. You know what I mean? It doesn't. It, that's fine. That does that takes up a lot of space in a in a two hour movie, you know. But in a show, you don't notice it because it's fine to have that stretched out, you know. But in a, uh, I don't know. that's my gripe for for when it comes to Marvel. Um, I don't know if you watch Invincible. I have not watched Invincible. All right, we'll we'll talk about Invincible a little bit down the line uh, next time. Uh, it is a good show though. If you are a fan of uh, uh, whatever. The, Shows like the boys and, and stuff like no, that. No, I've been meaning to watch it. Like, now I have a lot of time on my hands, so I'm going to probably be sitting down and watching it. I think uh, this week. either this week or next week, uh, Omni Man drops for Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat. Yeah, yeah, everybody's so. hyped for that, and everybody's like, yeah, I'm gonna beat the shit out of somebody as Omni Man. Like, I, I think Homelander's coming too, but Homelander's nobody cares coming, about Homelander. Yeah, Peacemaker. Yeah, Peacem oh my God. I hope they get a season two for that. I know that oh, DC it. is resetting its whole thing and blah, 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 blah. I don't care. John Cena as Peacemaker. The show was perfect. I love His little Peacemaker. thing in the Suicide Squad was perfect. You know, I, I like that. It's not a character I need to to take seriously. Um, you need to go. Yeah, I gotta go here pretty soon. All right, we'll we'll, we'll do a little bit of wrap up here. All right. Um, hot take of the week. I did not like Five Nights at Freddy's. I I actually liked it. I never played the games. So I, didn't, that is I my... didn't play the games either. I just watched like a little bit of gameplay like on YouTube or whatever. Yeah, I, I know what they are. I yeah. just never sat down and but played But I kind of liked it as like a basic, it was a basic bitch of a horror movie. <laughs> but it was like, it was, I liked it. I, I think Willy's Wonderland, which came out like two or three years ago, ruined it for me because this movie did not have enough Nicolas Cage in it. Fighting robots. <laughs> 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 I, I just, I, I expected from what people were talking about all these horrible violent deaths there was like the one scene where the people broke in mm. and they all got killed and that was it <laughs> i needed i needed more, more animatronics more. killing people in horrendous ways you know 
I, that's I think that's what my well, like, was. they did. It was a very small cast. Like, yeah, really. If you like really think about it, it was like you know Mike, the, the daughter, the father, the aunt, and then like. Well, even the, if they would have the done like people who were talking flashbacks the and the two other friends. Even that if they would have done like flashbacks then to when like when he finally learns the truth. You know about what's going on, like show flashbacks of him like stuffing kids' corpses into the machine. <laughs> like, give me some gore. I came here for gore, and and and, and there's just a lot of. Uh, first of all, there's a lot of exposition at one point in the film, and secondly, he just kind of like rolls with it. Like, uh, you know, he comes back and he talks to the girl. He's like, "Why didn't you tell me?" And she's like, "Well, I didn't know." Yeah, that they're all dead kids. Yeah, I got that. Like, he's just kind of. Oh, it, yeah, uh, it's cool. I figured. You know, let's. You know, how do I find the, my brother's kill? Like, I don't know. It's just, what universe are these people living in? Like, this should be messed up news to find out ghosts are controlling animatronics. You know, like, I'd be like, is Ghostbusters real? Do, do I call somebody? Like, how do I, you know what I mean? I don't know. It's just, uh, I, I, maybe if, if I give it a, a couple of rewatches or something like that, it'll grow on me. But I, I honestly, I love Willy's Wonderland, it, it worked so perfectly because it was so tongue-in-cheek and they amped everything up to 11. You know, you have Nicolas Cage doing Nicolas Cage things. You have All the other characters in that movie were were, were overly exaggerated versions of, of people. And then, like, every every time he, like, you know, one of the animatronic things came on screen and stuff, there was some extreme violence happening and some, some fight scenes and shit like that. That's, that's kind of... For it not to be, for it to be just a ripoff of the fri- of the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise, it's funny that the Five Nights at Freddy's the actual film was much tamer, you know, uh, than than anything else. Yeah. Um, I also just want to quickly bring up that we are planning on uh, making another film coming up called Raw Appetite. Uh, we are holding a fundraiser currently on GoFundMe. Uh, we will link it below in the description. Uh, so if you know anybody who uh, wants to donate, who uh, or even even if you can't donate or anything, uh, just share that link as much as possible. It would help us out greatly. Uh, we learned a lot from making uh, Cabin of Blood, and uh, we're hoping that uh, we can definitely uh, impress the hell out of everyone by making something even better. Uh, you know. Uh, this time with a budget. <laughs> uh, that is a little bit. Uh, I think we. I, I think all together was around two thousand five hundred. Uh, that cabin of blood cost, you know, uh, and uh, it shows a little bit. But uh, imagine if we had real money, we could do so much better. You know, it would be great, and and, and everybody would be happy. Um, uh, let's see uh, what else we got here. Oh, and you know what? I saw recently on comments, uh, some people are talking about our audio and video quality uh, for videos and stuff. Give us money. <laughs> that is, the, quality, that is the solution to all the problems is uh, I would love to buy uh, all the new microphones, all the new cameras and stuff like that. But uh, I need money to do that in this economy, sadly. So uh, give us money. If you like uh, what we're doing and want to see more, you know, make sure you first of all you like, share, and subscribe. Uh, spread, you know, spread the, the channel wherever you uh, wherever you can. You know, and then uh, you know, donate to our fundraiser, which will help us. Uh, whatever, um, and feel free to reach out to us too. Like, if you have any other like, you know, uh, questions, concerns, and so on and forth. Uh, we have a Twitter uh, at Studios Fat. We also have a Discord channel, which will also be linked in the description. Um, yeah, anytime uh, 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 you feel like talking to us, you know, we'll, one of us will answer. Um, yeah, do you have any final thoughts? Uh, pretty much, we just need more money and more quality so we can get better quality. Uh, we're trying to shoot, like, a bigger, bigger film for this next one, so all the help is greatly appreciated. All right, guys, uh, I've been your host, uh, Raging Anybody. No BBITW89. And uh, we love you all, and we'll see you next time. Peace. Peace.